I don't think any anybody or anything can prepare you for for doing something like Sanctum. Um, so, no, I wasn't prepared uh, in any way, shape, or form for for what we ended up having to go through. I mean, people can say, "Look, it's going to be really grueling." You need to know that. Um, but then, on the day when it's all happening, and um, you're either standing under, you know thousands of litres of water per minute clinging to a rock face and trying to climb up or you're, you know, in a tight restriction eight metres under the water trying to lift a, you know, 60 kilogram rebreathing thing uh, towards the camera for a few hours. Nothing can really prepare you for, for, for that eventuality. You get some idea that he's a, he's somebody who's a bit lost in the in the um, in the real world, who has who can only sort of find his footing underground um, because he's in charge of in those environments. He understands them. He understands the threat of them and the beauty of them, and he can deal with that. Talking to people and, you know, it's something like the, the, the can of worms of his relationship with his son is something that he struggles with. And so his journey in, throughout the story and all of the sort of misadventures that happen is to a place of, um, I suppose, a kind of softening of his edges and an, and, um, um, an opening of his understanding of his, of his son. Of, of who his son is, which he apparently has no real understanding of at, at the start. We had little pin lights inside our masks so the camera could see us, but what it meant was that all I could see was me. So I would be looking out at me and hearing and uh, just and a whole lot of bubbles and Nobody would really know what was going on under there and you'd have to find somebody coming over tugging you and writing something underwater which they would hold up for you and you couldn't see it because you could only see your own face. And so it was a kind of, I can't tell you really what it was like. Uh, it was extraordinary.